When you open up the Beyond Timeline, you'll see many a few different things. In the top bar, we have um, you have a save function, undo function, a start, previous, play, next, end, from, to, preview, video, and audio scroll. These are your main buttons that we'll be using very frequently. Uh, your save, pretty explanatory. Undo, where you can undo your last action. Your start, which will bring to the next show. Your previous, or the beginning of your show. The previous, which will go to the previous key that you are working on. The play, which is self-explanatory. The next, which goes to the next edit point. And then the end, to go to the end of the show. For the from and to, this is for a user time. So we can set a start point, start point, and then an end point, and then we have an area. For our preview, we can see our tracks. For video, if we have AV media, we can put it up here. An audio scroll, so if you want to, you can hear the audio uh, s scratching along as you like to go across, which we'll go into all of these features very soon. The next thing you can see in the Beyond Timeline is all of your track in your time area. Over here we have AV media tracks where we can insert audio and video and have it line up. And we have our laser tracks, which are standard, and we can create laser content. We can add laser tracks, and we can add AV media tracks. This, of course, becomes your time in your workspace. Down at the bottom, you have everything that you usually see within the grid section. The only thing that's added otherwise is the workspace. This, you can see your workspace uh, live, and you can work with the workspace at the same time as working inside of the Beyond Timeline. So if you have effects in frames, what you have in your in your workspace, you can come and drag them drop into here, and you can use them in here. Over to the right, everything seems fairly normal, but the event and the effect tabs have different uses in the timeline area. Do is going to minimize this clear the user time, and we'll get rid of the preview. Before we can go too crazy, though, we must decide where we want to send our laser content in our show to. So for each individual track, we need to set zones. So if we go to our projection zones, we need to decide which zone we want our show to go to. Let's have it go to the atmospheric effects. It'll be a single projector show, so it'll be simple. If we go to the preview tab, we see that it's viewed as audience scanning beams, and that we have good projector, we have a good coverage, it's uh, completely maxed out, no inverts or anything, so it'll be a good way to represent while we program. So that's good. So what we want to do is we want to right click on our track, click track properties, projection zones, edit, and we want to select and move the atmospheric effects zone over. Press OK. And then what we want to do is we want to assign to all tracks. And we'll confirm this. Press OK. And it will assign the atmospheric effects to every single track. So now that we have our zone set, we need to add some sort of media. So what we're going to do is I have an audio file. So I'll bring this in. Now, when you are using audio files in Beyond, it's highly recommended to use WAV files. You can use other sorts of files. Some audio tracks have varying bitrate, so sometimes what can happen is things will get out of sync without you even realizing. So if you use a WAV file, it doesn't have a varying bitrate, and it will be very, very uh, good to use, and it will be very reliable. So we have a WAV file. Now, what we want to do is we want to add laser content. Now in Beyond, there's many ways we can do this. First of all, we could double-click and create something. We can create a shape. Can press OK. We can also right click and do the same. We can delete that. And also we have the workspace. So we can create stuff in the workspace. Say we want to make another shape. And we can click and drag it in. Now the cool thing about this is that we can, we have the drag thing. There's a little icon here that shows that it's been dragged in. So if we go in here and we edit this, we make it red, press OK, it will refresh as red up into the timeline. 
Once you save your show, it will no longer link it, and it'll be locked in. But if you have a bunch of things you want to copy and paste, you can do that. The last way we can add content to the show is we can use the create or the draw event mode. So what you can do is you can click and drag out an area, and it'll give you the same options as you did if you would double click or right or right click. We'll turn that off for now. So you have your three type. You have three. You have many ways to enter content. Now this can be shapes. It can be abstracts. It can be really whatever you'd like. It can be animations, frames, anything you want. And you can also edit these as you go. The workflow in the Beyond Timeline is as is expected as you might um, as things like video editing software. You can click and drag multiple things. You can copy and paste them. You can click Control C again Control V. You can do the same with multiple. You can Control X and then Control V works the same. You can delete delete it and you can delete using the delete key and many other things so if you wanted to um, do those you can go in there create quick copies and quick pastes if you like what you have you can always select click and select and have multiple together and you can do those types of things now before we move on to how we're gonna modify and actually make a show out of this content I'd like to show you one little thing that we have here like I said before, the event and the effect tabs are different than you would have um, during the grid tab of Beyond. And here you can do things like change its color. So the event itself, say you want it to be blue on the screen. You can lock the event position and keep it from moving. You can mute the event so it won't happen, it won't activate. And you can do things like continue animations after after the event ending, so if you have it only have a if you have a full animation, uh, you have um, many frames and it's timed out right, um, but you don't want to have to worry about timing it right in here. You can have it just keep going. You can also change its its exact position, start and end times, as well as the duration up to the millisecond. If you would prefer not to click and drag and line up. You can also determine if, an, if, if a single event on the timeline were to go to a separate projection zone to kind of organize so you not have a million timelines. And of course you can also do prevent rerouting to keep it from being overrided if it's hot beams and you have crowd scanning. You can change over the translation, uh, the transitions if you have um, them running into each other. Or if you have this, which is a little bit of a transition little slider on the top thing but we'll go into actual effects on the eff in the events soon enough you can also mask um, if you're doing graphics or if you want to mask other things and we'll go into masking a little bit later you can have of course directions for the masking and tons of different things video masking and then also you have the option for output color balance so if you wanted to s if you have set a high intensity a full color um, balance and what have you can select those down here for individual cues or a, and excuse me events in the timeline the other tab that's changed is the effect now we'll go into this one second but every event has been given a set of seven default uh, effects and you can see them here and you can either modify them in the effect tab over here or you can do it in here and add your keyframes down in the timeline um, and we'll get into why this is important later um, when we talk about effects. Now that you know how to put in audio, set yourself up for your tracks, and add content, you're going to want to start animating. You're going to want to start doing interesting things. So we're going to clear all of the laser content. And what we're going to do is we're going to just make a couple simple effects. We're going to go through the basic effects. So what we want to do is we're going to create a new shape, make it a circle, press OK. And we're going to extend it out just a little while. Um, when you hover over the edges and you left click, you'll be able to get a extender. And it'll extend either way that you have selected from each end that you have selected. And you can modify exact positions and durations. 
To move them around, you can click the center and move around. You'll get a little hand uh, icon, and you can move it left or right. Now, to get to the effects, you can either press the downward arrow over here, or you can double click on the event and it'll show it all. Again, as I said, Beyond has a default seven effects, and we'll go through them now. We have size, rotation, position, color, brightness, visible points, and scan rate. This list of effects is really the majority of effects that you might want to use in Timeline. You can get most things done with this. So we're going to go through and we're going to demo them real fast. Now, if we want to have the start of this effect to be small, we can double click and it'll create a key in the size effect line. So we can go, we can click and drag, we can make it, let's say we want it to start at zero. So we can, otherwise we can either slide, or if we can't get there, we can press click it, and then we can enter in what we want, press enter, and it'll set it in. So let's make it zero, zero to start. And then we just want to click away from it, and it'll unselect. We can click on the click on the key itself and drag to reposition. It will give you a small number. You probably can't read it right now. It'll give you a percentile number. We can change that, but we can get we'll get to that later on in advanced features. What we want to do is we're going to click it, drag it all the way to the end until it says start, and then we're going to click it, double click on it near the end, and we're going to either drag up to 100%, enter it in or we can right click on it onto the slider and it'll reset to the default position which happens to be 100 100. Now if you'd like you can also add favorites name it we can call this 100 100 and so if you have a weird setting you can always double click and set it back to 100 100 and then we'll take the key and we'll drag it all the way till it says finish and if we drag through here you'll see that through the animation it slowly get it, it it gets bigger. So I'm just going to mute the audio real fast. So when we play it, it'll slowly bring up the size of the circle that we made. Now let's shorten it real fast so we can see the animation a little better. Actually, we'll shorten it a little bit more. Now when you have these keys, there's a couple things you can do inside with these keys. When you right click on a key you'll see many options. What mostly you have to worry about is you have different types of speed options, accelerations. So if we want it to be linear, so it'll go just straight, no acceleration. Ping pong, which will go back and forth. Ping pong smooth, which is kind of an acceleration and a deceleration to make it smooth out on the edges. Linear, which is just basically linear continuous. Uh, accelerate, so it'll slowly get faster. Decelerate, so it'll slowly get slower or it'll increasingly get slower. Uh, bounce, which bounce back and forth, into two discrete steps, which will make it two steps, four steps, eight steps, and 16 steps. As well as custom waveform, which will go into and advance, uh, and advance uh, features. Linear once, which is, has to do with some other types of effects. And then random, so it can just jump all over between the two. So what we'll do is we're gonna, add, we're gonna dis I'm just gonna show you a couple of these. We can do ping pong smooth first. So, it starts slow, gets fast, and slows again. Accelerate, so it slowly gets faster as it gets bigger. Decelerate, so it slowly gets slower as it goes to the end. And those you, then you have your options. Now the next one that you have as a default is rotation. Again, double click. You have an X rotation, a Y rotation, and a Z rotation. Of course, you right-click on all these to reset. Um, and of course, you just click away, and it'll bring down the menu. Again, you can have your keys wherever you'd like. Let's say we have, we want 20, between 20, and let's say 80%. We want it to rotate on its Z axis, 180 degrees. So now, it, between these two keys, it'll rotate 180 degrees. Now, in order to show that, I'm going to just give this a color effect. Okay, and so we can see the rotation between those two keys. So when we have it going, it's not rotating. Then it starts to rotate, and it stops rotating, and then it goes to the end of the event. The other, the next one is position. So you can have a start event, start key, and let's say you want to move it downward as it gets bigger. So we have starts middle, and then starts to go downward. Color, which you can do resetting. 
the um, intensity of your color reset right here. It'll be default to 100 and make it white. And when it's at 100, you can change the values of what colors you have. So if you want to have less red, if you want to make it a green, you can bring down the red and the blue. You want to kind of create your own color. You can do that. And so if we have this start at yellow, we can go another key, so it'll go to green. And then we can have another key, which will then go back to the default color. So when we, when we scroll through here, it'll start white because we defaulted it back um, to be 100% because it's active. It's an active channel. We can scroll through and we'll see that the, it goes from yellow to green back into the RGB color scroll that we had created. The next one is brightness. You can have a start. Let's say we want to have it start off dim. So we can have at the beginning, we can have 0%. A little bit in, we want it to bring it brightness back up. And then near the end, we want to keep the brightness at full. And then right here, we want to bring the brightness down. So it will be 0, 100, stay 100 for the whole time there. Then it'll go from 100 back to 0 at the end. So now that we have these effects in, we can press play and we can see it all happen. And we'll make it a little bit bigger, so it's a little bit easier to see. The last two are visible points. So if you want to, you can cut out or draw in. Um, draw in is probably the best way to say it. So you can draw in what you have. And then at the end, you could have it draw out. Oops, I accidentally double-clicked it. And draw out. And scan rate, of course, is as you would expect, the scan rate of the laser. And you can slow it down and then speed it back up. So it'll start to flicker and then it'll come back up. These are the default effects. Um, these are the default effects that come with every single event that you make, no matter what it is. It will always give you these options by default. Now if you see an effect you'd like, but it's not here, what you can do is you can right click and you can add an effect item. So, let's say we want to have a key effect, and we want to do, let's see, what do we want to do? We want to do um, some sort of modifier. So, what we have now is we've added an effect. So, if let's say we wanted to have it, so we could give it a wave, some waviness to it. Let's say we say four. Amplitude, we can bring the amplitude a little bit down. And what we can do is we can take that and we can add a bit of a speed to it. And we can drag this, bring this to the beginning. And then as it draws it out, it'll end up drawing our shape that we made and keeping it as it goes for a long time. So if there's an effect you know that exists within Beyond, you can always add it. Now, oscillation effects are treated slightly different than key effects are, so let's do that now. Let's put in a zoom oscillation effect. In the timeline, it's treated very differently, and a lot of the time it's difficult to use it in this kind of view. So that's, why the, that's where the effect um, comes in. Now, the way, this comes out, the way this works out is an oscillation effect always has a start and a finish. It has a start point and a finish point, and then it will go between those two points. So, we have our start and we have our finish. So let's say our start, we want to have to be 10, and then we can add 100, just default. So during this entire time, it'll end up doing it once. If, of course, we delete the size, then we can actually see it still does the same thing. It goes from 10 to 100 by the end. Back if we select this, it'll pop up here. And we can do what we'd like. If we'd like to have it happen twice, we can put in the repeats for it to happen twice. And we'll, we can ch we'll, we'll be able to choose what kind of uh, what we want. So we'll just say ping pong smooth for now. So we'll end up happening twice. So it'll come up, come in, and then go out. Now there's a lot of nifty things you can do with this, um, but we're going to go cover we're going to cover those in the advanced features. But oscillation effects do act differently. So when it comes down to it, key effects is usually your best bet. Now, if you don't like this particular view, you think it doesn't give you enough information on the surface, that's okay. There's multiple different views for your effect lines. So right here we have our smallest one, we have now our medium-sized one, 
and now we have our biggest size one. The biggest size one shows you a ver lots of information about how they move. And your middle size one gives you a little bit more information, lets you let you know exactly what's going on and what your actual values are. These are a little bit more advanced, and oftentimes I find it easiest to just look at it in the smallest view, especially if you're using content on multiple timelines. But the option is there if you'd like. The other types of effects you can do, because all effects are layer-based and what's on top of each other will act first. Um, so size will happen, then rotation will be affected, then position. Same as if you were in, uh, making it in, in a queue and you wanted to add things on top. You can also add, if you right-click, you can add effect lines to a track. So let's say you have multiple of these copied and pasted. We'll just put three down. And the, what you realize is that you also wanted it to do something else. But you don't want to go into each one, and you don't want to have to edit each one with all these complicated keyframes. So what we can do is we can double click. We can click on the edge and line it up and snap it, because the snap feature down here, or, well, we can click and snap it to the edge, and then we can bring it all the way to the end of this one and snap it to the edge. And when we click on this, we can go into the effect side, and then we can add the effect we want. So let's say we want a key effect, and we want it to, all of it, to rotate from the very beginning of this, from the very end of this, and we want it to all rotate uh, from the beginning from, to, from 100, all the way to negative 100 degrees. So as it goes across all of these effects, you will have slowly doing another rotation between all of them, uh, which might get a little complicated. Um, so, so we'll show another one. So in the same event effect event, we can add another one. So what we'll do instead is we'll do a brightness. Where is it? There it is. So let's say we want this whole, these all these three, to have a brightness of 50 in general instead. So at the beginning, at 0%, the beginning of it, we can create a key that will be at 50%. And because it stays at 50%, or pretty much, it will hold all of them and only let them go up to 50% brightness throughout the entire line of this effect. Uh, if you prefer a more of a quick show style, what we can do is we can click on the preview button and we can see all of our tracks. Now if we select this, it gives us the option of all the effects on the list that have been affecting this event. So if you wanted to, you can click this and then you can scale it down. And you can create your size. And you can do that with a keyframe that's given to you and it'll, it'll create a keyframe based on where the timer is. So if you really liked the way that it worked in Quick Show, you can still do that too and create your own keyframes within the show, within the and doing so kind of in a visual sense. Um, but if you didn't like those, you can click, you can drag, select multiple, right click, and we can uh, delete both of those keys. So if you do like the Quick Show style, you can go ahead and do that up here, but we're going to remove that. Now I'd like to talk about making shows for multiple projectors. So what I'd like to do is we're going to create a three projector show. And we're going to show you a lot of the options and the ways you can set up multiple projector shows in Beyond Timeline. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to remove these and just clean up my workspace real fast. Alright, so what we're going to do is we need to make zones for the three projectors that we're going to be using. So let's go to Settings and Projection Zones. And we're going to create new zones. All right. So we're going to make a new zone. We're going to call it left center and right. And what we're going to do, just for the ease of programming, we're going to go to the left one, and we're going to make the preview. We're going to make it audience scanning. We're going to scale it down a little bit. Let's call it 60, and we'll call it 40 high. And then we're going to move it over all the way over. So about negative 40, we'll bring it to the edge. And we're going to bring the projector, which is over here, over, oop, over, over to about negative 60. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to copy complete zone settings. We're going to go to the right. And we're going to paste uh, preview only. And then we're just going to invert this. So this is no longer negative. This is positive, And this is no longer negative. So this is positive. Now, what we're going to do is it's going to be a simple three projector show, as in it's going to be two controllers. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to invert using size width. So we're going to invert it by making it negative 60. So what happens is it will just show you in real time. We were at 60 and we're going to go to negative 60. So it does it on X flip. So for your programming. So we have those two and now we're just going to do the center projector. We're going to make it audience scanning. We're going to make it 60 40 and then we're going to do nothing else that's in the center so when we turn them all on in our preview you have this and make a nice three projector preview window now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the track properties and we're going to edit every one or excuse me we're going to make put one in the center you can even double click to make it go over there and we're going to assign to this one Do the same thing here, bring this one back in and go to center. Oops, don't want to do that. Okay. Track properties. And we're going to go to center, bring the atmospheric effects back. And we're going to do that one more time. So, what we're going to create is we're going to create four tracks for the center projector and then two tracks for the outside projectors. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put in left and right into the track destinations. Left and right. We're going to pull the atmospheric back. So we have left and right on these two, and then we have center, 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 and center. So when we put in content, we create a new shape, basic shape, and we create a basic shape on this one. Now, when you have them all at the same time, you're going to have three outputs on either side. Now, the other way you can also do this is if you wanted to, um, is you can add a track, add a track, and you can do track properties. Because you zoned it, you can also do a, tr a track for left and a track for right. So if you wanted to, you could do this. and have tick-tocking as well as of course putting in a couple up in the center now we're going to talk about some of the advanced features in the beyond timeline i have a bunch of things open we're going to go through them one by one a lot of these are really cool features that once you learn and you kind of that will help you get it through hurdles, help you play around, and help you come up with some really awesome effects. So the first thing I want to show you is something called high resolution mode, and this is something that has to do with the effects. Now imagine this. Imagine you have a, um, you've made an effect, and you have a, a brightness um, keyed out that goes on to the notes, but you realize you want it to be, you want um, you know the song, the piece you made it originally to end here, but it needs to go on for a little bit longer. And if you could do this, it's just going to extend. It's going to ruin all of your timing on all of those. So what do you do? Well, we have high resolution modes. If you right click on an effect, you can click high resolution mode. And what that does is yes, we're going to want to modify all the lines. What that does is it keeps you away from the, uh, it takes away the percentile base. So, you know, when you click and drag a keyframe, um, it goes from what, from start to finish and is 100%, there's 100 different places you can be. But with high resolution mode, you can make it, and it, you can drag it. There's absolutely no keys and there's no percentile. So you can zoom in all the way and move it by little teeny pixels and make it there and it will track where that position is because it does it it ends up putting in that key and um, it determines the, mi the which microsecond it is in that in the timeline so what we can do with this the other feature is when we click and we extend 
it doesn't move them anymore because it doesn't have any percentile basis to go off of. It just has the, pos the time positions to go off of. So what we can do is we can extend this further. We can take these two, go here, and then we can make our a new, you know, come back brightness. And if we wanted to, we can do that. And then we can go back to zero if that was the extension that we needed to make. Um, and you can do that. Other options are not high resolution. Put it back to quick resolution mode. Yes. Once we set it back from quick to quick resolution mode, you have 16, 32, 64, 100. Or you can multiply it by 2, or you can multiply it by 10. Um, so if you start out off the base of 100%, you could have 1,000% or 200%. Or you can have other values in between. But the high resolution mode allows you to click... Oop, it's not high resolution mode. <laughs> high resolution mode allows you to click and drag um, and... Uh, without moving keyframes. And also it gives you unbelievably, imaginably awesome spacing for all of your keys. So that is uh, high resolution mode. The next thing that I want to show you is a little bit more into the oscillation effects into timeline. Because uh, I think I didn't really necessarily go through it good enough uh, to really show you. Uh, so let me just do something right here. Let me bring the position down so we can see it as, in a, as something. So what I've done here is I have two oscillation effects now inside. So if I click on the first one, you have a hue scroll. There's not a good way to do a hue scroll with keyframes that's not smooth, unless you're going to go crazy. So what you can do instead is you can do a hue scroll in here, and we'll say start at 0% of a hue scroll and then ends at 100% of a hue scroll. And you have it repeat once. It just repeats once within this whole time, depending on how long it is, will be how long the hue scroll lasts. Um, and that's how you can do a scroll. The other one that we have is we have the brightness. So if you say you want to start and finish it, start it at 100, finish it at 0, and then you say it's going to, you know, in this time slot, it, the beat hits 8 times, you can line it up and have the 8 um, eight fades out. Um, and we'll play that, and I'll just show you as it goes. So you have 8 fades out. Actually, it's it's uh, the animation is on ping pong. So if we go to linear, then it'll start back at 100%. So there's a lot of nifty things you can do with the actual um, animation, the accelerations of those two. So I wanted to touch on uh, a little bit more of the, to get into those a little bit more, because a lot of the time there isn't good uh, key effects to get the same result as you would with an oscillation effect. Same, you know, so if you wanted to do crazy waves, you can do it in an oscillation effect inside the timeline. Um, so if you wanted to have it wave out on a some sound effect or what have you, you can do that in the time without having to worry about making your sh your actual frame that way. Now what I'd like to talk about is masking. Um, masking is basically where you have one object that will be in front of the other. So right now we have the circle in front of the line and then the line goes away whenever the circle crosses it. Now to do masking, which is usually used a lot in graphic shows, but can be used for other things, um, what we need to do is we need to create a mask, first of all, and so we create a blanked inside mask. And then what we need to do is we need it to response to blank points that lie within the blanked inside. Now for the line, we need to do the same thing. So because this one is on top, it will cross in front of it and you can create a mask over things. And you can get really creative with these things if you have graphics and you have multiple objects crossing and one's supposed to be behind, then you can mask things over or top of it. Um, the new Beyond Masking is very good and uh, you can see very well that it masks very very perfectly up in the preview. The other thing you can do now in Beyond is you can have a, you can mask over video. So let me play this. So what we're doing is we're having the circle move around and mask on top of the video. So or, so we allow the video to only be seen inside of the... Uh, we only see the video allowed to be inside the circle. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at the masking. So what we've done is we've done gone to the Video Masking tab, and we've selected Create a Visible Inside Mask. So the video that is playing, any AV and media, will be playing inside the circle, and it's as easy as that. So you can create nice effects like a searchlight that slowly will come open. And show the video. Um, I just did this with 
couple of oscillation effects in the size. And you can create awesome little masks um, for video. And if you wanted to have laser overlay the video, you could do, you can very easily have the video projector in your zone, and you can totally um, take this laser and place it around so you're actually having a really awesome look. Um, you could even do a rear projection, or you know, you can go crazy with whatever ideas you have. The last thing I want to talk about is, is a show BPM. Um, in your shows, in the show file, you can set what you want um, your show to be BPM wise. So if you have a section where, let me just mute this so you can hear the music, there's a very distinctive beat and it goes on for a while and you wanted to take one of your live cues that has based on time, so we can look at a cue I made real fast. This is just a circle. Um, has a few beat-based uh, things oscillations on. <coughs> has a few beat-based oscillations on it, um, and uh, so we have a rotation on a beat. We have a brightness on the beat, and we have X and Y on the beat. So we have a beat-based effect, but we want it so it plays with the beat. So default, the system BPM is 120, but I've now set it to match this beat, so we can watch. Even if we go to the global BPM and make it fast, it will still stay slow in the timeline. So the way we do this is we go to File, Show Properties, and then what we can do is we can set the we can show we can set the show BPM. So we can set it to 85 beats per minute, which is what that beat is at. Um, we can also do things like follow the system BPM if you know you can, your BPM is going to be set at the right. So you can set up um, a timeline that has a bunch of cues in it that are based off the BPM. So if you're at a show and you're planning on bringing up timelines in your cues um, live, then you can go ahead and set it up so when you do have your show playing, you're not going to have to worry about if the DJ lowered the BPM on the song or not. So you can come in, set that up, and your show will be at that BPM.